Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Larry Filler. I'm a senior vice president and praxis leader at Embryonics Analytics. Um, and I work very uh, closely with the CAA clubs, both nationally and uh, in the regional clubs. And um, today uh, we have the privilege of having Rhonda English, who's the CMO from Club CAA or CAA Club. Um, sorry, CAA Club Group. I, I messed that up. But really, the objective of today um, at EA, we are very fortunate to have some terrific clients we work with. And one of the things that we're really trying to do is to showcase uh, some of the wonderful things that our clients do, uh, not only to make their organizations successful, uh, but um, also some of the things they do for the communities and their employees, uh, especially during these challenging times. So um, really today is an opportunity for us to ask Rhonda some questions uh, for her to address them and let us know what's going on at, at CAA. Uh, before I do that, I, I thought it'd be great for Rhonda to perhaps introduce herself, talk a little bit about her role at CAA, and um, maybe a little bit for those who don't know what CAA does, which I would find surprising, but just to tell a little bit about CAA and the services they provide. So Rhonda, over to you. Hi, thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I am happy to introduce myself. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at CAA Club Group. And uh, most people would know us um, as just CAA, but uh, CAA Club Group is a larger organization and it actually encompasses uh, two automobile clubs. So CAA Manitoba and CAA South Central Ontario, as well as three insurance companies. Orion Insurance Company, which specializes in travel insurance, CA Insurance Company, which specializes in home and auto insurance, and Echelon Insurance Company, which is a commercial uh, com combination of commercial and personal insurance. So all of those five entities actually make up um, CA Club Group. So it's not just the roadside assistance that uh, most people associate with us. We've in fact been in the um, insurance business for 47 years and in the travel business for 60 years. Actually, it's our 60th anniversary this year for uh, starting the travel, travel agency side of our business. So um, along with those core businesses, we all have a very robust rewards program for our members. And we have a very strong advocacy team that uh, represents the voice of our members in terms of anything safety and uh, on roads, whether you're walking, cycling, driving, um, and uh, just uh, consumer rights. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, I know, um, you know in one of our recent meetings, we were discussing you know the challenges of the pandemic in the last 18 months and it's impacted us all personally and professionally and our organizations in so many different ways but i think um i know a number of us hearing you speak about some of the um the steps that caa took uh, to address this both internally and externally were really inspiring to us and maybe you can share um some of those uh the, cha the challenges that you've had but also the way that you've addressed some of those challenges. Sure, I'd be happy to, uh, Larry. I, you know, I wish there was just one challenge that I could talk about, <laughs> but like everybody else, uh, this pandemic has been going on a long time and it really impacted, um, you know, uh, multiple areas. Uh, it impacted our internally, our associates and our businesses. It impacted our members and it's impacted the communities in which we serve. Um, and so if I just start, you know, the pandemic basically shut down two of our lines of business or almost three. So travel and travel insurance uh, basically came to a standstill and retail stores were obviously closed um, for much of the time that we've uh, been going through the pandemic. So how do you stay connected with your members? How do you make sure that you're not talking about things that you shouldn't talk about? I mean, we talked a lot about travel in our communications in our magazine, and we had to do some pretty quick pivoting around that to make sure that we weren't um, going to be talking about things we shouldn't be talking about and to be sensitive to where people were at and what was going on. On the travel side, we decided to you know, focus on the dreaming part of travel, which was to still have some virtual travel um, seminars. We used to have them in person at the stores and we switched them over to virtual. And we had a lot of people interested wanting to know about you know, Antarctica or different uh, places to visit once you know, it's safe to do so. Um, on the um, and of course, 
you know, increasing just digital overall. On the employee side, um, our CEO uh, and President Jay Wu, he made a promise to the employees right at the beginning of the pandemic that he would not lay off anybody because of the pandemic. So when you think about hundreds and hundreds of our associates who were in those lines of business that we really had no revenue coming in from, um, how do we keep them employed and productive because you don't want you know they, they want to feel productive at the same time and so um, we did a number of things um, one was we offered some retraining opportunities so in our home and auto insurance business that was going through the roof because we have the pay as you go auto insurance with everybody leaving their cars in their driveways and working from home people weren't driving as much and so our pay as you go CA my pace insurance uh, we had a lot of demand for that product um, so we offered to retrain uh, um, any agents in the travel and retail areas who wanted to um, get their uh, license for home and auto insurance. And we had almost, a, a, I think, over 100 of our agents retrained or to move into the membership services side as well. Um, so that was one thing we did. Um, data integrity, that's an area close to your heart, I think, uh, Larry. But, you know, every large company with a lot of data has to you know gaps and missing things and we had a lot of missing um, gender fields because it's not a question you ask on the phone and if the agent doesn't you know just fill that field in and from old legacy systems and so we had uh, you know there's a lot of um, names that I mean I guess you have to you make some assumptions, but when you don't know, you just don't know. And um, to be respectful of you know people and how they want to be termed but so we had these huge hundreds of thousands of lists that just went out to these agents so that they can um, improve our data integrity and fill in some missing fields. And we also did some community outreach. So uh, we have a lot of members who are seniors and we did a program where we got these agents that were in Brisbane to call out and say, hey, is everything okay? Do you need anything? Are you getting groceries? Do you need anything like resources or points of contact? So we made these outreach calls to the community which were really well received. Um, by the mostly seniors. Um, on the roadside, we had extra capacity in our roadside because people weren't driving as much. So we offered our trucks to do um, deliveries for food banks around the city and the communities, both in Manitoba and Ontario. So we're using it that way. Uh, and then on the, on the general community side, Jay's a pilot, a commercial pilot and has a plane. And so there was a need for um, PPE up in Northern um, regions for hospitals. They just didn't have the supplies. And we partnered with another uh, doctor um, initiated organization that was collecting PPE. And we did uh, several missions up to Northern hospitals. Jay flew up PPE to those hospitals in order to make sure that they had um, those supplies in place. Uh, so the, like at the beginning, those were kind of the main, like, there was always lots to do, but we were um, really trying to find ways to use our resources um, in a way that gave back to the community and helped people along the way, so. Oh, I'm gonna say, wow. I mean, I, <laughs> I think it's the second time I've heard some of those things, but, um, you know, I think it's, it is uh, just tremendous to think about the ingenuity and the caring that people, the compassion that as an organization and a culture, it shows and you know, that we, if we all do one or two little things, you guys have done 10, 20 things. Uh, we can, you know, hopefully make the world and our community a better place. And, and, I, and I really hope, I mean, part of giving, you know, these stories get untold. And, uh, and it's important that they are told so people can hear about them and, and, and hopefully goodwill towards CAA, which, which is important, but also maybe, like I said before, the word inspire them to think about things that they could be doing the same. So, um, you know, I want to thank you as a, you know, you guys have been a longstanding client. I'm also a customer, but to see those things um, that you do, it's, it's really, it's really wonderful. And it maybe leads into, you know, the next question that I have. I mean, I've, I've um, often been impressed having worked with CA for a long time that there's this kind of image of what CA is and yet it's a really well-respected brand and year over year, um, it is always one of the top ranked brands and I don't have the specific number. It might be number one this year, but it, it is right up, uh, it, yes. So, and, and, and it's really, you know, maybe you told us the secret to your success just with your answer to the first question, but maybe you could share with us what are the things that 
that drive your organization and, and make you continually the top admired brand amongst the consumers in Canada? Yeah, well, um, I don't know if there's a, a, a secret sauce, um, but yes, we've been very proud to have been number one or number two in the last, I think, three or four years since we've been in the Gustafsson Trust Brand Trust Index Survey, which is run independently by um, University of Victoria. Um, and so, yes, this year we got the results I, earlier this year and we were number one trusted brand in Canada. And I think there's over 300 brands that are that are um, uh, put into this survey. So uh, very, very proud. And I think it, you know, it really comes down to doing the right thing and then the rest follows. So we start with an internal purpose and our internal purpose, every employee knows we're obsessed with member safety. So all of the actions are driven by what do we need to do to make sure that that member's okay, no matter what the situation is, scenario is. You've got travel agents who, you know, will go to a member's house because they didn't answer the doorbell for the, I don't know, like there's, there's you know, lots and lots of stories of how member um, associates have gone above and beyond because they've been concerned about members. And our organization encourages that kind of behavior because um, it's really, you know, do the right thing and the rest will follow. And another example of that is um, when the pandemic hit, our insurance company is not one of the big boys. So, I mean, we're, we're big, but we're not in the top five. Um, and we were the first insurance company to step up and reduce our auto and our property insurance rates by 10% when the pandemic started. We just cut all everybody's rate by 10%, both auto and property. And then after that, we did a $50 rebate to auto insurance policy holders. And then we did a $100 rebate. And then we did another 5% rate reduction on auto insurance. So we as a company um, are the, the, we have given back the most of any insurance company in Canada. And we did it because people aren't driving. We're not seeing the same loss ratios. We're, you know, our, we're, we're, our, our expenses are down. So we're passing that back to um, our members or our insureds because you don't have to be a CA member to have our insurance. Um, and the other side on the membership side, we allowed deferring membership fees because people didn't have the capacity to pay. And so we'd say, you know what, do you want to defer that your, your payment for a couple of months? And so we would just defer it. So we basically gave them 14 months instead of 12 for their, for their fee, um, for their membership. So we were looking for ways that we could give back. We gave out free rides. Um, to all first responders and, um, out there, if you had your car breakdown, we gave you, if you weren't a member, we did it for free. And if you're a member, we didn't count it. So that's been going on almost the whole pandemic. Um, and so I just think you do the right thing and people recognize that even if you don't scream it from the rooftops, you know, word travels, word of mouth, people say, oh my gosh, I had this great experience, but we're doing it because it's the right thing to do, I think. I know at EA we sort of a well-known term like a North Star and knowing what it is and making sure every employee knows and and you know hearing that word member safety which is easy for every employee to resonate and that's the most important thing um, I, that probably goes a long way uh, to making sure that every employee is behind that. I'm curious. I don't. You may not be able to share this, but um, things like your retention rates or renewal rates for your auto and home insurance. Um, have you? Has that improved? Has it stayed the same? Has it declined? Like it, you're doing a lot of great things in terms of giving money premium back. Um, yeah. has, that, has that impacted um, some of those metrics? Yeah, um, I don't have them off the top of my head, but yes, I, I know that our renewal rates have been have been steadily increasing um, and um, both on membership and uh, and on our home and auto insurance, which is really, um, you know, great it's a great outcome again that's you know it wasn't why we did it we did it because we had we had the capacity to and we could and I guess one of the other things is um, we're not shareholder return driven because we're not public company so so we aren't we aren't driven to the bottom line and, and like the pressure on it like some other organizations just naturally are um, and I think that really helps us to to just be who we want to be and not worry about I mean, you have to be viable, obviously, but um, but not worry and focus just on the bottom line. Uh, but interestingly, on the purpose, the internal purpose, 
before we changed, before we had the one we have today, which is we're obsessed with member safety, which is like five words or whatever it is, we had three paragraphs that nobody could talk about what our mission was, why we were here. And it just was way too big. And Jay, when he came in and uh, took over as CEO, he just said, I can't remember. So how can anybody else remember it? We need something really simple. And that's when it, uh, that's when it took hold. So it was a good lesson learned for every, for all of us, I think, with a business background who said, oh, mission has to say who you are, what you're doing, whoa, whoa, whoa. I can go through all of the, you know, the checklist there. That's great. You know, another thing that's always sort of amazed me, it, it's, I, I called it here like secret, you know, best kept secret, but, um, you know, the, the more that I've worked with the CAA clubs and been a member, sometimes it's actually hard to see it as a member, but there's so many benefits to membership. Um, and I think, you know, my parents' generation for sure, it was all about the toe and the brake, car, car breaking down, but it is now so much more and perhaps your success at the first has made it difficult maybe to make everybody aware of all the other tremendous things in value people get out of their membership fee. Maybe you can share some of those things that people would be surprised to, to know about uh, or don't or should know about but aren't taking advantage of. Uh, well, I'm glad you asked that because there are we have so many things to talk about and you know people only have so much capacity to to hear and take it in but I think with something that's really relevant right now with um, with um, COVID is how many people have started to, to cycle bicycle and we did some research actually that um, through our advocacy group um, and uh, 50, over 50% of Ontarians plan to continue bicycling after the pandemic's over, but a lot of people took it up. As you know, you couldn't even buy a bike if you wanted one and you didn't have one. Um, but we've had bike assist for, I don't know how many years now, I think almost 10 years we've had bike assist, which means that whether you're on your bike or in your car, if you need assistance, you get a flat tire on your bike, as long as you're reachable on a road, you can't be in the middle of a forest because we can't get in there. But if you're riding, you can call us and we'll either try to get your bike fixed and you back on it, or we'll take you and the bike to wherever you need to go. So you can, I think that's a really relevant one for, for the time right now, but it's been around for a long time. Um, so that's, that's one that just jumps in my mind. Um, obviously our rewards program and all the partners we have from restaurants and hotels where you can save, you know, 10% off of Harvey's and Kelsey's and Montana's and Swiss Chalet and, Eastside Mario's um, to uh, home renovations, deluxe, 25% off your paint. So all of these different partners, uh, but our own internal services as well. So our, as a CA member, you save on your auto insurance and your property insurance. Um, you save on your travel insurance um, when you buy from us. Um, if you book travel with us, we waive all the travel booking fees. A lot of times uh, agencies will, will charge a fee because there is little commissions on some of the air flight and those kinds of things. We waive all fees. Um, we don't charge any extra for our members if they want to come in and, and book travel, which is even just an air flight, not a big cruise or anything like that. Um, free passport photos for if you're a plus or premier member, just walk in, you get a free passport photo. Um, we also, uh, um, what else? Oh, our merchandise, you get... Uh, merchandise pricing, member pricing on merchandise. But if you're a plus, you get an extra 5% off of that. And if you're a premier, you get an extra 10% off of that. So there's just a, like you can pay for your membership very easily. I just, you know what, in fact, I just booked Ripley's um, Aquarium because my sister's coming into town and it's 20% off when I book online through the CA Rewards portal. Yeah, so it was, I just saved like 20 some dollars right there. <laughs> I know it's probably, benefit that's not very valuable these days but i know you your movie passes that you had in the past were like huge huge savings that I think yeah the cineplex uh, tickets actually we still offer them and there's no expiry there's like expiry dates used to be on but there's no expiry dates on them anymore like you can just use them forever but they were great a lot of people actually yeah we sold a lot of them because i think the tickets were around eight or nine dollars versus 13 or 14 to get into the theater so uh, some significant savings there. And when it's, when it's time to go back to the theater, uh, that's, uh, that's still available um, today, but less demand, as you say. <laughs> I just got my magazine today. So I encourage everybody listening who's, a, well, if you're not a member, become a member. Because there's a lot of value. But if you are a member, 
look through the magazine because it really outlines a lot of the different things that you offer and the opportunities to save money, which more than more pay for your membership, that's for sure. Yeah. It's really, uh, like I said, in certain ways, there are so many, it's hard to focus and talk to everyone about all of them. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it is great. But, and even your show and save benefits, which people don't even think about. You know, I know now is not a huge time for booking hotels, but you get a discount on almost every hotel. I can't think of one that you don't just by saying you're a member. Yeah. Putting a membership number, so. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, there's uh, way too much to talk about. So all I can, I'll put a little plug in. We just, our CA app has all of our rewards partners, uh, you know, listed. And so if you're out and about, if you just say near me, it'll show you any places that are offering a CA discount near you, wherever you are, if you walk into a mall or wherever you are. So, you know what, I have to ask you one question that analytics related just because, you know, I have people watching me, but I just, you know, I know I've had the opportunity of working with the CA clubs in various capacity over the last 20 years. And I know it's really been, you know, a journey, you're, you, know, um, you have great data. A lot of organizations would love to have the information and, that you have on, on members. We always would like to have more obviously, but I'm, you know, I'm just curious, maybe you could talk a little bit about your analytics journey and some of the things that you're trying to do to improve insights uh, and to become more relevant, to communicate better with, with members, et cetera. Yeah, happy to do that, Larry. And of course, I, I wouldn't expect an, inter, uh, an interview without a question around data from you and, uh, and Veronica. So happy to respond. Uh, you know, with so many different lines of business and data sources within our organization because of the different insurance companies and products and travel systems and, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges was trying to pull all that data together into one uh, one place so that we had this single view of our members and under really understood um, our relationship with them. Uh, and that was sort of the first step way back, I guess it was probably 2009 or 10 or when that, that started. Um, and so that certainly allowed us to um, have a better understanding of our members and our relationships in terms of what they do with us. But there's so many dimensions of a person and life stage and lifestyle and, and interests that we don't capture through anything that we're going to see in a transaction record, right? And so um, once we had all our internal data together, the next thing was to look for external data sources and uh, that would help to round out who are who are our members and, and what's relevant to them. And, and that's where you guys came in, come into play. And one, one first place you guys come into play and certainly with PRISM and and the ability to profile and, and segment our members and add the dimensions that we wouldn't have on an individual basis has really helped us to um, uh, have that better understanding, a deeper understanding of, of our members and what life stage they're in and what would be relevant to them. So, so that was sort of that next. So getting it all together, then bringing in some external data. And then the next evolution was really to get into a little bit more sophistication in terms of modeling and predictive modeling in particular, um, you know, we have um, the two, between the two clubs, we have uh, 2.4 million members. So one size does not fit all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and some of our businesses are risk-based. So we don't really, you know, there's certain risks that we have an appetite for and some we don't. So um, we worked with you, uh, just one example is working on the home and auto insurance predictive models, um, the response model and the purchase model, which really helped us to not bother people who didn't, you know, weren't gonna have a high propensity to respond to our um, particular offers or uh, what we had, the product or services. So that was, uh, you know, we continue to evolve in that way um, in terms of our data and to really um, to do as much personalized communications as we can and, and by, you know, establishing personas and, and really um, segmenting our members um, and cutting and slicing it in different ways and then testing. I think um, some of our lessons learned around the data or things that I would I would um, say is there's always more analytics you can analyze can you know keep analyzing keep analyzing but you you've got to stop and say okay let's start let's start testing um, you know our hypothesis and making sure that you have a very um, uh, you, that your um, structure of your testing is really uh, defined 
So you've got your control group and you've got no biases in there. And you are going to be able to, at the end of the day, go back and say, yes, it, this really worked or this was the right target group. Because I think we get so excited and we get out there and then we realize, oh, my gosh, I can't really compare this to anything if I don't hold back a group. or And so if you don't have that um, knowledge or sophistication around testing to get it from the experts, because, um, you know, that's the only way you're going to move forward. Um, and I think the other thing is that the people that the, on the team have different levels of understanding data and how to use data uh, in order to drive their decision-making and their marketing programs. So I'm going to focus on marketing because I'm a, a, that's the part I'm talking about. But I think there's a real opportunity to bring everybody up to a certain level of knowledge and understanding of data and statistics and, and control groups and testing in order to make sure that you have that discipline going on across your lines of business. Um, and especially when you're competing for the same member. So travel, travel insurance, home and auto insurance, uh, rewards, they all want to talk to the same people and they can't all talk to the same people or they're or going to drive that person crazy, right? So we really have to be very careful about what is the right message to the right person and, and our, um, our data analytics and our modeling and segmenting and profiling and personas are all really critical components of um, allowing us, us to do that better than we did before yeah that's great i love the way you talk about it and i know, you know working with you and your team team members it's it's great to see progression without getting an uh sort of the analysis paralysis sometimes i think you know progress isn't always about being perfect it's about trying to get perfect and you know you know seeing people willing to try things but in an educated and informed way, um, realizing that with all the data sources, your data, whether it's our data, the best analytics minds in the world, if you had them or didn't have them, you're never gonna really get to perfection. You always have to keep striving to be better and using the information that you have. And, and I, it really encourages me to see your organization move in that direction and continue to progress. And, and it, it's really nice to see. Um, and we really appreciate, uh, you know, the partnership that we have with you guys, because, you know, once we've, we've worked with you, as you said, we've worked together for a long, long time. And uh, and the better, you know, you, you we know each other, then the more productive and the more efficient and effective uh, everything we do is when we when have that shared knowledge. Right. Yes. Yeah. Rhonda, I you know what? We really appreciate your time. Um, I think I appreciate your messages more. <laughs> uh, it really is. I'm so glad you were able to share that uh, with the with the viewers and the people that will get exposed to this. And um, and uh, it, it, I use the word inspire. Hopefully, will inspire others. Um, and um, we appreciate the partnership that we have. And uh, but even more so, I think we appreciate the work that you do. Um, and 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 um, how you strive and your your culture that drives. You your organization's success and your own success. So thank you so much for today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to seeing you in person soon. A real fireside chat. Yeah, well, I thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell the story. I, and again, we do these things um, and just because they, we do them, but, uh, and I, I appreciate that you wanted to uh, tell more people about it. Uh, I'm grateful that our organization is, is capable, you know, has the capacity to do these things and hopefully we'll be able to do more going forward. Thank you, Rhonda. Have a great rest of your day. Okay. Thanks, Larry. We'll talk soon. Bye.